Welcome back to the Cynthia Clark Book Club. We are reading Chapter 9 of The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Goval Shin. Chapter 9 is called Perfect Self-Expression or The Divine Design. Let me tell you how the book club works. I am going to post this clip on my Facebook page. And if there's something in this particular chapter or in the book, period, that you want to comment on, just post a comment and we can have a conversation. Otherwise, I'll just do one of my favorite things, which is reading anyway, which is very therapeutic for me. Uh, I am... Um, Oh, let me tell you where I got this book. I got this book from uh, Barnes & Noble. It has four of Florence's books in one. I also bought a book online from Walmart.com that had four in one. And I got it with delivery for less than $10. So it's very affordable. If you like uh, a copy of the book, The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scoval Shin for free as a PDF, if you you can go to uh, the description section in YouTube and click on my website once you go to my website if you click on an image of the book it will pull up a PDF file uh, for you to read along with us for free this book is in the public domain so it's so it's cool uh, also if you would like to be my friend on Facebook if you look in the description uh, in YouTube, it has a link to my Facebook page. I have a Facebook page for the book club, which I do not use. So I changed the link below to my personal Facebook page. I'm more integrated, so I'd rather just deal with one instead of two because I'm always on one. So this way I only have to check one page. So uh, if you'd like to send me a, a friend request, you can, and we can talk about this book uh, on Facebook. So anyway, uh, here goes. I am going to read all, well, I'm going to read a list of the chapters in this book. Uh, it's a short book. It only has 10 chapters, and the first chapter is called The Game. Chapter 2, The Law of Prosperity. Chapter 3, The Power of the Word. 4, The Law of Non-Resistance. 5, The Law of Karma and the Law of Forgiveness. Uh, six, Casting the Burden and Pressing the Subconscious. Chapter 7, Love. Chapter 8, Intuition or Guidance. Chapter 9, which I'm reading now, Perfect Self-Expression or the Divine Design. And Chapter 10 is called Denials and Affirmations. So let's get into Chapter 9, which is called Perfect Self-Expression or the Divine Design. And the way it works is I read... I pretty much just read the doggone chapter. However, if something in the chapter uh, reminds me of something going on in my life, then I'll just throw my two cents in in terms of what I think about what I'm reading for myself. And you can do the same thing on Facebook if you choose. So, chapter 9, Perfect Self-Expression or the Divine Design. It says, No wind can drive my bark astray, nor change the tide of destiny. There is for each man perfect self-expression. There is a place which he is to feel and no one else can feel. Something which he is to do which no one else can do. It is his destiny. Another thing that I do, you guys, is I change the principle to the female principle a lot because a lot of the books that I read, they say he and him, but I'm a she and a her, so I'll flip it so that it resonates more with me. So I'm going to read that paragraph again using the female principle. Um, there is for each woman perfect self-expression. There is a place which she is to feel and no one else can feel. Something which she is to do which no one else can do. It is her destiny. This achievement is held a perfect idea in divine mind awaiting man's recognition. As the imaging faculty is the creative faculty, it is necessary for man to see the idea before it can manifest. So you have to see what you want before it manifests. So man's highest demand is for the divine design of his life. He may have the faintest conception of what it is, for there is possibly some marvelous talent hidden deep within him. 
His demand should be infinite spirit, open the way for the divine design of my life to manifest. Let the genius within me now be released. Let me see clearly the perfect plan. The perfect plan includes health, wealth, love, and perfect self-expression. This is the square of life which brings perfect happiness. When man has made this demand, he may find great changes taking place in his life. For nearly every man has wandered far from the divine design. I know in one woman's case, it was as though a cyclone had struck her affairs. But readjustments came quickly and new and wonderful conditions took the place of old ones. Perfect self-expression will never be labor, but of such absorbing interest that it will seem almost like play. When you really enjoy doing something, it doesn't feel like work. That's not the book. That's my little two cents. When you really enjoy doing something, it doesn't feel like work. Back to the book. It says, the student knows also as man comes into the world financed by God, the supply needed for his perfect self-expression will be at hand. Hmm. Many a genius has struggled for years with the problem of supply when his spoken word and faith would have released quickly the necessary funds. For example, after the class one day, a man came to me and handed me a cent. He said, I have just seven cents in the world and I'm going to give you one for I have faith in the power of your spoken, of your spoken word. I want you to speak the word for my perfect self-expression and prosperity. I spoke the word and did not see him again for at least a year later. He came in one day successful and happy with a roll of yellow bills in his pocket. He said immediately after you spoke the word I had a position offered me in a distant city and am now demonstrating health, happiness, and supply. A woman's perfect self-expression may be in becoming a perfect wife a perfect mother, a perfect homemaker, and not necessarily in having a public career. Demand definite leads, and the way will be made easy and successful. Hmm. One should not visualize or force a mental picture. When she demands the divine design to come into her consciousness, she will receive flashes of inspiration and began to see herself making some great accomplishment. This is the picture or idea she must hold without wavering. The thing man seeks is seeking him. The telephone was seeking Bill. I remember early on in life, I wanted to be a teacher. I always wanted to be a teacher, but I also knew that I did not want to teach children. I wanted to teach adults. Um, and I also knew that I didn't want to be a school teacher, but I had the desire to teach. And I remember uh, working a job at the railroad, and I remember wanting to change fields. I wanted to get into the field of finance, like financial services. And so I was researching different companies and um, I found out that the companies that I was looking to pursue, I couldn't work there part time. You had to work there full time. And I was not willing to give up my railroad job to thrust into that career. It just wasn't something I was, that wasn't a risk I was willing to take at the time. But I still had the desire and, and I guess the desire of, uh, summoned a company, a financial services company to me that did allow for, for part-timers. So anyway, I started working for that company. And then I remember one day, I hadn't read this book or anything, but I remember I was in the car with my husband at the time and I wanted to do something big. Uh, and I was sitting there thinking, well, you know, what's my goal within the company or whatever? And then it hit me, and this might have been like 2003, 
uh, it hit me that I want to be the first black woman to make a million dollars a year with the uh, financial firm that I work for. And so that is like my big goal within the firm that I work for. That's the divine design for me. And I remember being in the car um, asking for a lead. I didn't know that's what I was doing at the time, but uh, but that's what came to me, that, that goal to become the first black woman to make a million dollars a year with that firm. Anyway, back to the book. Parents should never force careers and professions upon their children. With the knowledge of spiritual truth, the divine plan could be spoken for early in childhood or prenatally. A prenatal treatment should be let the God in this child have perfect self-expression. Let the divine divine let the divine design of his mind, body, and affairs be made manifest throughout his life, throughout eternity. And that's one of the things that I am d doing with my daughter. Things that interest her, uh, her father and I are working on making sure that she's exposed to it so that she can determine what she wants to do and what she wants to be. And ironically, she's 10 years old now, ironically she says she wants to be a teacher. And she says, well, I don't know what kind of teacher you're at. I don't know if it's going to be a dance teacher or a music teacher or art teacher. She doesn't know, but she wants to teach. So I think that's, that's interesting. I didn't force that on her. That's just what's in her spirit to do. So anyway, back to the book. Um, God's will be done, not man's. God's pattern, not man's pattern, is the command we find running through all the scriptures. And the Bible is a book dealing with the science of the mind. It is a book telling man how to release his soul or subconscious mind from bondage. Hmm. So the, when I read that, I think like the subconscious mind, that's the God mind. And the conscious mind is more the man mind or the mortal mind, human mind. Anyway, let's get back. The battles described are pictures of man waging war against mortal thoughts. A man's foe shall be they of his own household. Every man is Jehoshaphat and every man is David who slays Goliath mortal thinking with the little white stone faith so man must be careful that he is not the wicked and slothful servant who buried his talent there is a terrible penalty to be paid for not using one's abilities hmm. often fear stands between man and his perfect self-expression Stage fright has hampered many a genius. This may be overcome by the spoken word or treatment. The individual then loses all self-consciousness and feels simply that he is a channel for infinite intelligence to express itself through. He is under direct inspiration, fearless and confident, for he feels that it is the Father within who does the work. I'm going to read that again using the female principle. She is under direct inspiration, fearless and confident, for she feels that it is the mother within her who does the work. A young boy came often to my class with his mother. He asked me to speak the word for his coming examinations at school. I told him to make the statement, I am one with infinite intelligence. I know everything I should know on this subject. He had an excellent knowledge of history but was not sure of his arithmetic. I saw him afterwards and he said, I spoke the word for my arithmetic and passed with the highest honors, but thought I could depend on myself for history and got a very poor mark. Man often receives a setback when he is too sure of himself, which means he is trusting to his personality and not to the father within. When I read that at first, it, I didn't like the way it felt, but when I read it again, the reason I didn't like it is because it makes it seem like you shouldn't depend on yourself, and I think you should depend on yourself, 
But what I think it's talking about is depending solely on your intellect. There's a reservoir of reserve uh, power and infinite intelligence and energy that's available to us that makes it where we don't have to overuse our intellect. And so when I read that, it, it makes more sense to me when I think of it that way. Anyway, here goes. Another one of my students gave me an example of this. She took an extended trip abroad one summer, visiting many countries where she was ignorant of the language. She was calling for guidance and protection every minute and her affairs went smoothly and miraculous. Her luggage was never delayed nor lost. Accommodations were always ready for her at the best hotels and she had perfect service wherever she went. She returned to New York knowing the language. She felt God was no longer necessary so looked after her affairs in an ordinary manner. Everything went wrong. Her umbrella, I'm sorry, her trunks delayed a minute. Um, ugh, let me start over. Everything went wrong. Her trunks delayed amid in harmony and confusion. The student must form the habit of practicing the presence of God every minute. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Nothing is too small or too great. And when I read that, you know what it makes? I recently saw Star Wars. I had never seen Star Wars before until recently. And so when I read that, it makes me think of the force. And so uh, when Yoda was telling um, Luke Skywalker, when he was training him, Luke was using his intellect to do everything. And so Yoda, you know, when he first started using his sword, and so Yoda said, uh, close your eyes and do it. And so it was like he was letting go of his intellect and letting that infinite power within come through to help uh, help things happen, to use the force. And so that's why sometimes when I read this and it talks about, you know, let the father do it, I have to, I have to switch it in my mind uh, to something like the universe or the force, that power for it to, for it to uh, make sense to me. Anyway, back to the book. Sometimes an insignificant incident may be the turning point in a man's life. Robert Fulton, watching some boiling water simmering in a tea kettle, saw a steamboat. I have seen a student often keep back his demonstration through resistance or pointing the way. Trying too hard is what, what I would say. Try, trying too hard. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Sometimes you try too hard, you just screw everything up. Sometimes you just got to let go and let, let it flow. Um, so anyway. It says, he pins his faith to one channel only and dictates just the way he desires the manifestation to come, which brings things to a standstill. I know with me, I'm, I, this is just, I know with me, with certain things that I really want, uh, sometimes I have to kind of just take my foot off the gas and just coast and let things unfold by themselves by you know by itself uh when i try too hard i screw things up and i'm in a place now where i'm doing i'm going back and forth uh with a project that i'm working on sometimes i'll uh, i'll start working on it and it doesn't feel right and i just have to let it go and what's happening is by me just backing up and letting it go now i guess because i've been thinking about it so much and putting so much mental energy into what i want that now that i'm kind of just turning my head to work on other projects now it's like the force can now work on that project that i assigned to it now that i've gotten out of the way anyway back to the book my way not your way is the command of infinite intelligence like all power be it steam or electricity it must have a non-resistant engine or instrument to work through and man is that engine or instrument over and over again man is told to stand still oh judah fear not but tomorrow go out against them for the lord will be with you pause 
in this book, in an earlier chapter, Florence said that if you read the Bible, uh, but you substitute the word law for Lord, that you get an entirely different meaning. Uh, and so as I'm reading this and I come across the word Lord, I may change it to law just to uh, practice what, what she recommended. Oh, Judah, fear not, but tomorrow go out against them, for the law will be with you, or the force will be with you. Ooh. Anyway, I'm going to start war's head now. You shall not need to fight this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the law with you. We see this in the incidents of the $2,000 coming to the woman through the landlord when she became non-resistant and undisturbed. And the woman who won the man's love after all suffering had ceased. The student's goal is poise. Poise is power for it gives God power a chance to rush through man to will and do its good pleasure. I swear I am reading this chapter at the right time for me because I'm in a state of poise. I'm just sitting still. That's where I am right now. Anyway, back to the book. Poise, he thinks, poised, she thinks clearly and makes right decisions quickly. She never misses a trick. Anger blurs the vision, poisons the blood, and is the root of many diseases and causes wrong decisions leading to failure. It has been named one of the worst sins as its reaction is so harmful. The student learns that in metaphysics, sin has a much broader meaning than in the old teaching whatsoever is not of faith is sin he finds that fear and worry are deadly sins they are inverted faith and through distorted mental pictures bring to pass the thing he fears his work is to drive out these enemies from the subconscious mind when man is fearless he is finished masterling says that man is God afraid? Wow. So as we read in the previous chapter, man can only vanquish fear by walking up to the thing he is afraid of. When Jehoshaphat and his army prepared to meet the enemy, singing praise the law for his mercy endured forever, they found their enemies had destroyed each other. And there was nothing to fight. For example, a woman asked a friend to deliver a message to another friend. The woman feared to give the message as the reasoning mind said, don't get mixed up in this affair. Don't give that message. She was troubled in spirit for she had given her promise. At last, she determined to walk up to the lion and call on the law of divine protection. She met the friend to whom she was to deliver the message. She opened her mouth to speak it when her friend said, so-and-so has left town. This made it unnecessary to give the message as the situation depended on the person being in town. As she was willing to do it, she was not obliged to. As she did not fear, the situation vanished. The student often delays his demonstration due to, um, the student often delays his demonstration through a belief in incompletion. He should make this statement. In divine mind, there is only completion. Therefore, my demonstration is completed. My perfect work, my perfect home, my perfect health, Whatever he demands are perfect ideas registered in the divine mind and must manifest under grace in a perfect way. He gives thanks he has already received on the invisible and makes active preparation preparation for res, receiving on the visible. I got to read that again using the uh, female principle. In divine mind, there is only completion. 
Therefore, my demonstration is completed. My perfect work, my perfect home, my perfect health, whatever she demands, our perfect ideas register in divine mind and must manifest under grace in a perfect way. She gives thanks she has already received on the invisible and makes active preparation for receiving on the visible. Wow, wow. One of my students was in need of a financial demonstration. She came to me and asked why it was not completed. I replied, perhaps you are in the habit of leaving things unfinished and the subconscious has gotten into the habit of not completing as the without so within she said you are right I often begin things and never finish them I'll go home and finish something I commenced weeks ago and I know it will be symbolic of my demonstration So she sewed, she, obviously there was an article of clothing she started working on and didn't finish. So anyway, it says that she sewed assiduously and the article was soon completed. Shortly after, the money came in a most curious manner. Her husband was paid his salary twice that month. He told the people of their mistake and they sent word to keep it. When man asked, believing, he must receive, for God creates his own channels. Wow. Okay. I have been sometimes asked, suppose one has several talents. How is he to know which one to choose? And it says here, what you do is demand to be shown definitely. Say, infinite spirit, give me a definite lead. Reveal to me my perfect self-expression. Show me which talent I am to make use of now. I have known people to suddenly enter a new line of work and be fully equipped with little or no training. So make the statement, I am fully equipped for the divine plan of my life and be fearless in grasping opportunities. Ooh. Some people are cheerful givers but bad receivers. They refuse gifts through pride or some negative reason, thereby blocking their channels and invariably find themselves eventually with little or nothing. For example, a woman who had given away a great deal of money had a gift offered her of several thousand dollars. She refused to take it, saying she did not need it. Shortly after that, her finances were tied up, and she found herself in debt for that amount. Man should receive gracefully the bread returning to him upon the water. Freely ye have given, freely ye shall receive. I'm going to read that again. Woman should receive gracefully the bread returning to her upon the water. Freely ye have given, freely ye shall receive. There is always the perfect balance of giving and receiving. And though man should give without thinking of returns, he violates law if he does not accept the returns which come to him for all gifts are from God. Man being merely the channel. Hmm. A thought of lack should never be held over the giver. I like this. For example, when the man gave me the one cent, I did not say, poor man, he cannot afford to give me that. I saw him rich and prosperous with his supply pouring in. It was this thought which brought it. If one has been a bad receiver, she must become a good one and take even a postage stamp if it is given her and open up her channels for receiving. I used to not like receiving. From, from people, but I didn't mind giving. I think I wanted to feel like I was in control or something like that. Anyway, I don't turn down any, I, I rarely turn down anything these days. Unless, you know, if my spidey sense is tingle when someone gives me something, then I don't take it. But that's, that's a rarity. 
But for the most part, if somebody wants to give me something, I takes it. Anyway, let's keep going. The law loveth a cheerful receiver as well as a cheerful giver. I have often been asked why one man is born rich and healthy and another one poor and sick. Where there is an effect, there is always a cause. There is no such thing as chance. Hmm. This question is answered through the law of reincarnation. Man goes through many births and deaths until he knows the truth which sets him free. He is drawn back to the earth plane through unsatisfied desire to pay his karmic debt or to fulfill his destiny. The man born rich and healthy has had pictures in his subconscious mind in the past life of health and riches and the poor and sick man of disease and poverty. Man manifests on any plane the sum total of his subconscious beliefs. However, birth and death are man-made laws. For the wages of sin is death. The Adamic, the Adamic fall, Adamic fall, talking about the fall of Adam, and consciousness through the belief into powers. The real man, spiritual man, is birthless and deathless. He never was born and has never died. As he was in the beginning, he is now and ever shall be. I'm going to read that again using the female principle. The real woman, spiritual woman, is birthless and deathless. She never was born and has never died. As she was in the beginning, she is now and ever shall be. So, through the truth, man is set free from the law of karma, sin and death, and manifests the man made in his image and likeness. Man's freedom comes through fulfilling his destiny, bringing into manifestation the divine design of his life. His Lord will say unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Death itself. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord eternal life.